This is Twit. We have an errant asteroid sighting. That's right. Thank what, you, we're we're going to lead with that one? That's the one that we're going to lead one? That's oh, wait. One. Wait, yes. We got That's a couple a of asteroids. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It's the asteroid that wasn't actually uh and this this, <laughs> this is actually a, a a story that that came up at, uh, at the american astronomical society i was walking through the um uh what do you call it like that that place with all the booths the event space the anyway i was walking exhibitors. through that the exhibitors. the exhibitors yeah the exhibit hall and astronomer jonathan mcdowell like pulled me aside you know space tracker of of jonathan's space report also at harvard smithsonian and he's like hey did you know about the asteroid that just got deleted and I was like, no, John, tell me more. And, and he told me this wild story about how astronomers found an asteroid earlier this year, like just at the turn of the, the year. And uh, and it turned out that it was not an asteroid at all. Like the next day they realized that it was Elon Musk's Tesla from uh, from the, the Falcon Heavy launch in 2018. Right. Because it's, it's still up there. They launched it. It's orbiting the sun. Right. And... Uh, and so they had to delete it. And the Minor Planet Center, the the group that that announces the new discoveries that keep you know gives them their names and all that stuff, had to actually issue a retraction to delete the entry, delete the asteroid from the records because it is not an asteroid at all. And uh, and Jonathan actually talked about this at AAS during a panel called Dark Skies, and it was one of 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 a couple to talk about just the issues. That astronomers are facing in this more modern spaceflight era, and he told me on the phone this week that it, it's actually something that is not very uncommon. In fact, NASA's old WMAP uh, uh, space telescope, Space Observatory at L2, was miscategorized as an asteroid many times during its mission life because astronomers would be looking out there, you know, on the night side of Earth, uh, and it was at L2, a million miles away, opposite side of the sun. And they would they would think it was an asteroid until it fired its thrusters and started moving, and then they're like, "Oh, we gotta we gotta go back." So, uh, at the time, although Avi weren't... Loeb would would be very excited about that if it turned out it really was an asteroid that was firing thrusters. It, yeah. So, so at the time, it wasn't like a huge problem, but it was just something that was an annoyance. But we are in a new era now. SpaceX launched 134 Falcon missions last year alone, more than most countries do, uh, and a lot of these countries. Or a lot of these companies uh, and, and some countries, some of the new players, are just throwing their upper stages out into the cosmos rather than having them re-enter because it's easier to do it that way. And they're they're getting lost out there until we rediscover them years later and we think that there's something else. Now, why is why is this important and not just you know a funny story about Elon Musk's car in space? Well, because these astronomers are trying to get an accurate picture of the solar system, of where stuff is, of where these asteroids are, and more importantly, where these near-Earth asteroids are, because we need to know where they are so that we can need to know if some of them are a problem or a threat that we're going to have to deal with, if it's going to come smack us in the face, you know, a decade plus down the line. Having an inaccurate census of that is going to be an issue. Uh, and similarly, uh, as more and more of these companies become more active in space, there's a whole space transparency knot about who's responsible for what. You know, Jonathan told me, if you know, on Earth we have to file flight plans to fly from city to city. So why, why, why would you not have to file a flight plan if you're going to another planet, for example, in space? Why not? It's pretty basic. So they'd like to have a, a database set up uh, for that. And there are other companies like Astroforge, which actually came up from some of our readers in the the comments while we're recording this video. Yeah who have tried to keep things on the DL, right? Because of proprietary information. Astroforge is a space mining company that wants to mine an asteroid, reap all of those, those juicy metals that it has, uh, and make a profit somehow. And for a long time, because they're launching a mission uh, in uh, next month as we're recording this, but weeks away from us recording this, they are launching a mission to said asteroid. They weren't telling people where this Odin spacecraft was going to go because right. they were they didn't want their competitors to know. Well, uh, the don't want claim jumpers out e there. E exactly right, uh, but but that's an issue because if astronomers don't know that there's a spacecraft out there, uh, you know, going to an asteroid, they're going to think that those spacecraft that they find. Uh, could be another asteroid mistake it for something else and then you have this inaccurate picture again about what's actually uh, out there and, and so so that's a really big issue the american astronomical uh, uh, society released a statement uh, last uh, september of which jonathan was part of the, the subcommittee that did it 
uh, calling for more transparency from these companies and these government agencies as they get more active in space. And it seems to have had an effect because this week, as we're recording this, AstroForge announced what asteroid they were in fact going to go to. Uh, and and the, the CEO there said in part, it was because they wanted to calm some people down. They, they saw the pushback from the scientific community and, uh, and they, they, they wanted to identify it. And it's called actually, what is it? It's called 2022 OB5. It's a 100 meter plus uh, S type or M, M asteroid. So, and uh, M class asteroid, pardon me. And uh, they're hoping that people might look at it share data with them and then they'll they'll get more information about it as they get ready to, to fly there so it seemed uh, jonathan called that kind of a big victory for space transparency so that's great that that that's happened but that's just the tip of the iceberg there's a lot of more of these companies flying so it is an issue uh not just a funny story and i just thought we would i'd like to highlight that uh for our top story today hey if you enjoyed this clip be sure to check out this week in space you can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below see you there <laughs>